Good evening. Thanks for coming. Uh, we appreciate your time. We did actually not plan this on the worst day ever for the weather, but we're glad you weathered the storm. No closer. Uh, I don't have the light on. I'm good about it. So uh, one uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to ask everyone to come to the meeting is because uh, we want to be transparent about um, the questions that we know a lot of community members had regarding what happened um, for our recent officer-involved shooting on Broadmoor. Um, the second piece is, is we know there's a lot of misinformation out there, so we want to provide you the information that we know um, so that you have the facts about what happened. Um, obviously, safety is our number one concern. Um, there's internal and external issues as it relates to this, so we want to provide you with as much information as we can and be a, as transparent as, as possible because we know that that's an important piece to public safety in the community. So what we're going to do is provide you the information, um, a synopsis of the incident. Uh, we are going to hopefully be able to answer any questions, um, any, any concerns, welcome any comments and feedback, and then um, we'll wrap up the meeting probably in by about 6.30, and if we need to go beyond, we can. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, the lead manager of um, CID, which is Lieutenant Bob McManus, and he's going to start this meeting. Hi, good evening. I see a lot of familiar faces here, as I did that morning uh, last Thursday on December 4th. Uh, those that don't know me, uh, I grew up in the 600 block of uh, Broadmoor Boulevard. That was my street, it was my neighborhood. So I know a lot of families that live there. I've played in the houses where this happened, so I've got kind of a personal connection that it bothers me that it happened in our neighborhood. Uh, the events that led up that morning, at about 7.20 in the morning, a resident on the block called the police department to report suspicious activity. And the suspicious activity was a white Nissan four-door Maxima parked on the street with a couple of people who appeared to be sleeping inside. Whoever it was that called didn't recognize the car to the neighborhood. They didn't recognize the people inside. They did just what we ask you folks to do. Call us when there's something out of place. The first, the two officers were dispatched. It's a routine call for service. We go to those all the time. And the first two officers that were dispatched responded to the scene. As the first officer arrived, he got out of his car and he approached the vehicle. A 19-year-old man by the name of Dwan Ramsey uh, from Oakland, who was on probation himself, immediately got out of the passenger seat of the car and tried to get away. The officer was by himself, was able to immediately latch on to Mr. Ramsey out in the middle of the street, but was involved in a struggle. He was unable to get him handcuffed, and he was involved in the struggle as the second officer was arriving. As the second officer came up Broadmoor Boulevard off of Bancroft Avenue, he saw the struggle going on, got out of his car, and immediately, within one to two seconds, the car accelerated, driven by a 16-year-old girl from Oakland. It accelerated from about 30 feet away, narrowly missed hitting the first officer who had to let go of Mr. Ramsey and push himself actually off of the suspect vehicle to stop from being hit. The car tried to uh, get through a parked car and where the second officer's police car was parked and struck the officer. Actually, there was very little damage to the police car. And what stopped that was the officer trapped between his police car and the car that was getting away. Now, unbeknownst to the officers as they were responding to this, because they were given a good vehicle description, but they were not given a license plate on the car. The car had been reported stolen in Oakland on November 29th. As the car left the curb and gunned towards the officers, the one officer had just a split second to perceive a threat, react to it, and try to get out of the way. And the only thing that he could do in that short period of time was try to stop that threat that caused him to di discharge his handgun at the driver of the car, trying to prevent himself from getting hit. He had absolutely nowhere to go given the short distance and the confined area that he was in. The second officer, perceiving the same threat that his partner was going to get hit by this car and probably seriously <coughs> injured, fired at the driver of the vehicle as well. Uh, the driver struck the officer. <coughs> the officer got on the radio and screamed for help. And the vehicle took off and went down to Bancroft and turned into the city of Oakland. Uh, 
An officer needs help was broadcast. Members of the Oakland Police Department, Alameda County Sheriff's Department, and San Leandro Police Department all responded to the scene, as did uh, fire department and paramedics. Finding a uh, San Leandro police officer on the ground with a serious leg injury and uh, severely bleeding. They were able to apprehend Mr. Ramsey at the time. They were able to tend to the injured officer. The injured officer was uh, transported to the hospital. Uh, as you all know, he remains in the hospital today. He underwent a second surgery this afternoon, third surgery this afternoon, uh, and is trying to recover right now. We do not know what the long-term prognosis will be for that officer. Teams from Oakland and San Leandro then began the investigation to try to identify the 16-year-old driver of that car, and at the same time, teams were in the city of Oakland looking for it and found it up off of International Boulevard. It was unoccupied. There was evidence in that vehicle to show it was the exact same vehicle with the bullet holes, collision damage from hitting some of the parked cars as it fled, but it was, there was nobody in it. Uh, detectives were able to continue their investigation. The detectives learned the identity of the 16-year-old female driving the car and attempted to contact her to family residence in the city of Oakland. She was not there, but the, uh, the detectives were told that she had received uh, what appeared to be a gunshot wound to her hand as a result of some of the gunfire. Uh, detectives tried to check with the local area hospitals, track this girl down as soon as possible to get render aid to her as well as get her into custody. And for several hours, detectives had to negotiate with family members to try to get her to self-surrender because that was going to be the safest thing possible for everybody. And at about 4.55 on Thursday afternoon, December 4th, she did just that. She walked into the front door of the San Leandro Police Department with family members, and they turned her over to our investigators. Initially, she was uh, arrested on suspicion of uh, attempt murder on a police officer, as well as auto theft. The case has since been reviewed by the Alameda County District Attorney in their juvenile division. She has been formally charged with two counts of assault with a deadly weapon against a police officer, one of those counts causing great bodily injury to the officer, as well as hit and, felonious hit and run, uh, resulting in great bodily injury to the officer and auto theft. So she will be held accountable for this and will stand trial in the juvenile court system here in Alameda County. Mr. Ramsey, the passenger in the car, was on probation. Uh, although he did passively resist the first officer that tried to apprehend him when he left the vehicle, and he was contributed, contributing to the delinquency of a minor, which is a misdemeanor in California. Although the district attorney did not file formal charges against him, they are holding him on a violation of his probation at this time. He's incarcerated at Santa, at, uh, Santa Rita County Jail in Dublin. So with that, uh, there will be three investigations that are currently being conducted. First one is a criminal investigation uh, leading up to what caused the officers to fire. And in this case, that crime is assault with a deadly weapon against a police officer. That is what our investigation division uh, is investigating and has presented to the Alameda County District Attorney. There's a second investigation that will be conducted by the Alameda County District Attorney's Office independent of our criminal investigation. And they will review that report and they will find out uh, statutorily whether or not the officers fired uh, justifiable and within the laws that permit them to do so. A uh, couple of key things here for everyone to know, because I know the questions have or will be asked, do we have video? Because our officers now wear personal worn body cameras, and yes we do. We're unable to share that video because of the fact it's evidence in the case and will be used in the criminal prosecution of the 16-year-old driver, but I can assure you we have the evidence and it's going to substantiate the charges that have been brought against her. Okay, is there any questions of me? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, several weeks ago there was another incident of a uh, car ramming a police vehicle on Woodland. Are these at all related? No, they are not related at all. Uh, that occurred on October 5th right. on a Sunday. Uh, two isolated, completely unrelated incidents, but somewhat similar in nature. 